Hi, I'm Nimit Sahoni, and I'm going to discuss our NeurIPS 2020 work on how we can make classification models more robust to fine-grained variations that are not captured by the class labels. In classification tasks, each class may be made up of many different subclasses. For instance, we may be classifying images of cats versus dogs, but within these two classes, or superclasses for clarity, there are many different breeds of each animal. Or we might want to classify x-rays as normal or abnormal, but abnormal could mean pneumonia, lung cancer, or so on. Often we only know the superclass labels for the task, but not these finer grained subclass labels. Models are usually trained to optimize for average performance, and so can underperform on important subclasses. We call this hidden stratification. For instance, suppose a dataset has 10,000 patients each who are healthy or have pneumonia, but only 1,000 have lung cancer. The model might misclassify all lung cancer patients as normal, but still get high average accuracy if it gets everything else right. This could be very dangerous if it was actually used to make diagnoses. A key challenge in addressing hidden stratification is that subclass labels may not be available. Our goal is to make models more robust to hidden stratification effects. We want to ensure good performance on every subclass without requiring the subclass labels. Let's look at a simple example to understand why hidden stratification might occur. The two superclasses here are the orange triangles and purple dots. The circled rare subclasses don't contribute much to the total loss, so a model trained to minimize this might misclassify them. If we instead minimize the worst case loss over any subclass, it learns this dash decision boundary and gets everything right. In real world datasets, we expect images from the same subclass, let's say white cats, to look more similar to each other than those from a different subclass, like black cats. We can model this by assuming that there's a latent space where visually similar examples are close together, like so. If we cluster the data in this latent space, we can approximately identify the subclasses, but we don't know this latent space, so instead we can use the feature representation of a network trained on the task as a surrogate for it. This motivates our algorithm, George. The inputs to George are the data and superclass labels. First, we train a standard neural network on the task and use the activations of the penultimate layer as a feature representation. Then we cluster the features from each superclass. Since we don't know the subclass labels, we treat these clusters as our subclasses. Finally, we use robust optimization to train a new model to minimize the maximum per cluster loss. If the clusters are good approximations of the subclasses, and the model performs well on every cluster, it'll perform well on every subclass. We evaluate George on image classification tasks. Here's a snapshot of our clustering results on MNIST. We plot the data in feature space cl colored by cluster assignment and show examples from each cluster. Examples from different subclasses usually fall in different clusters, as we'd hope. In terms of worst case performance across subclasses, across several datasets, our method in orange outperforms standard empirical risk minimization in blue and approaches the performance of a robust model trained using the true subclass labels in green. Theoretically, we show that under a mixture of Gaussian assumption on the data, our method attains the same asymptotic per subclass generalization rate as if we actually knew the true subclasses. Thanks for watching, and check out our paper and blog to learn more.